is that certainly his own health care. And he's responsible for his own choices, no matter how bad those choices might ultimately prove to be. As plaintiff said yesterday, he's no different than any other man, any other woman, any other adult. And we are responsible for the choices we make. And make no mistake about this, it was Mr. Jackson, not AEG Live, that chose Dr. Conrad Murray. You've seen the evidence. AEG Live didn't choose him. On the contrary, they tried to talk Mr. Jackson out of it. They told him there are great doctors in London with some of the best hospitals in the world. They, they told him that he didn't need to use his money to bring his doctor with him. But Mr. Jackson was undeterred. Ultimately, it was his money, his doctor, and his choice. If he wanted to bring his doctor along with him and his family, that was up to him. And he certainly wasn't going to take no for an answer. You remember, I have to drink a lot of water. Um, but not taking no as an answer should come as no surprise to you all. It was his tour. It was his comeback. And as Karen Fay told you, Mr. Jackson was not someone who took no for an answer. Now, you remember Ms. Fay. They brought her back a couple times. She was Mr. Jackson's friend, confidant for decades, one of plaintiff's star witnesses. The one person Dr. Metzger testified was always with Mr. Jackson. And what did she tell you when she was on the stand? She told you that Mr. Jackson would not take no for an answer. If he wanted something, he got it. That's how she described him. And who would know better? Mr. Jackson didn't take no for an answer with Dr. Murray. And why would he? Didn't he have the right to choose his own doctor? AEG Live certainly didn't have that right. They didn't have the right to tell, to tell him, now you can't see your longtime doctor anymore. Mr. Jackson said he needed to be a well-oiled machine. Do you remember those words? He needed his doctor to keep him in top shape for the tour. And that was reasonable. He was doing 50 shows over the span of nine months. He was a 50-year-old man. He was taking his three children with him. Taking his longtime doctor with him, that was reasonable. And remember, when you look at the facts, when looking at what was reasonable, you have to go back to 2009. It's not what we know today. It's what did they know in 2009. And 2009 was a long time ago. Barack Obama had just been sworn in as president for the first time. We were on the verge of what everyone thought was going to be the next Great Depression. Sometimes they said Great Recession. That was 2009. You have to go back to that time and not what we know now. And that's because what you know, what we all know now, is very different. We know so much more because of plaintiffs. Plaintiffs brought this lawsuit. And by bringing this lawsuit, they made it possible for the first time for AEG Live to get access to some of Mr. Jackson's most personal, most private material, like some of his financial and medical records. That wasn't possible before. So we now know that Mr. Jackson was nearly half a billion dollars in debt. We know that now. We didn't know that then. We know that his mother's house was nearing foreclosure. But, that, but we, don't know, we didn't know that then. That's what we know now. What else do we know now? That Mr. Jackson spent decades shopping for doctors to give him the painkillers that he wanted. That he manipulated and he lied to those doctors who he saw so he could get double doses. But we didn't know that then. Mr. Jackson made sure we didn't know that then. And we now know that his family tried and failed on numerous occasions to stage an intervention. Many of them. You heard about them. We didn't know that then. Nobody did. They made sure nobody knew it. And in 2009, AEG Live had no idea of how or for what Dr. Murray was treating his patient, his patient, 
Michael Jackson. That was between Dr. Murray and his client, his patient. That's what the patient-doctor relationship is. All AEG Live knew was Dr. Murray was Mr. Jackson's longtime doctor. That's it. And of course, neither Mr. Jackson nor Dr. Murray told AEG Live what they were actually doing in the privacy of that locked bedroom at night. Behind locked doors, security out front, behind the gates of 100 North Carrollwood. They didn't know what was going on in his house. How could they? Think about that. If, if AEG Live had known, it would have ruined everything. So they made sure AEG Live didn't know. Why? Well, Mr. Jackson wanted this tour, and he wanted it badly. You heard Mr. Jackson's doctor of 30 years, Dr. Metzger. He told you last week that Mr. Jackson wanted redemption. That was his word. Mr. Jackson wanted redemption. And this tour would redeem his image with the public. That's what they hoped. An image that had undergone a serious beating in the prior years. And this tour was also going to redeem him financially. That's why Mr. Jackson didn't tell AEG Live the truth. So both Dr. Murray and Mr. Jackson, the doctor and the patient, always told AEG Live that Mr. Jackson was okay. You've heard this every single time. He's okay. Everything's fine. There are no problems. They told AEG Live to stick to its job, promoting concerts, to stay in their lane. They were the ones told, stay in your lane. Dr. Murray and Michael Jackson would handle Mr. Jackson's health. And doesn't that make sense? He's a grown man, and he has a doctor. They will handle his health. That was their job. Remember, you never heard Mr. Jackson and Dr. Murray ever coming to AEG Live and saying, wow, we got a problem. They never came and said, Mr. Jackson needs a break. They never came and said, we got to take a little time off. They never came and said, I'm sorry, he's addicted to drugs. We're going to do something about it. They never did that. And now they want us, AEG Live, to be to blame for that? Think about that. They were never told that Mr. Jackson needed to stop. Mr. Jackson never said it. His doctor never said it. They said the opposite. They needed to go on and could go on. They never told the truth to AEG Live. And they did everything they could to make sure AEG Live never knew the truth. They would keep it from them, and you heard that they did. AEG Live only learned the truth after Mr. Jackson passed. When Michael Jackson's bedroom was searched by the police and its secrets were revealed, when the world and AEG Live learned for the first time what propofol was. You remember, no one knew what propofol was. No one had ever heard it before. Never before Mr. Jackson's death. And AEG Live had no idea. Simply stated, AEG Live never would have agreed to finance this tour if it knew Mr. Jackson was playing Russian roulette every night in his bedroom. It would have never happened. But they didn't know that. Now it's true. AEG Live, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Gongaware, they all wanted to do this tour, there's no question. And they were incredibly excited about it. They wanted it to move forward. They wanted to be part of Mr. Jackson's redemption. And yes, they also wanted to make a profit. There is no question about that. But that doesn't change the facts. It doesn't change that adults are responsible for the choices they make. Now, Mr. Panish told you yesterday that it was unreasonable for AEG Live to believe Mr. Jackson. It was unreasonable to trust him. It was unreasonable for him to want a doctor to help him stay in top health. It was unreasonable for him to take his longtime doctor on tour with him and his family to London. It was unreasonable for AEG Live to respect Mr. Jackson's adult choices. Think about that. And think about this. You heard Catherine Jackson testify in this case. She said she wanted it to be a search for the truth. Mr. Panish said the same thing in his opening statements, search for the truth. And he repeated it again and again yesterday. Mrs. Jackson said that she wanted to understand to know what really happened to her son. But Mrs. Jackson also testified, remember this, that she closes her ears 
when she hears bad things about him. She doesn't want to believe he had a problem. And that is understandable. One cannot blame her for that. She's his mom. Anyone who's ever known an addict can understand how that is. But she, as a result, she closed her ears to the choices that Mr. Jackson made. She closed her ears to the fact that Mr. Jackson overdosed, that he overdosed on a drug that he chose, and that he had been repeatedly warned about, given to him by his own doctor. And now, Mr. Panish needs you to close your ears to the simple truths of this case. The truth that it was Michael Jackson that chose Dr. Conrad Murray. The truth that it was Michael Jackson who asked Dr. Conrad Murray to join him on the tour. The truth that it was Michael Jackson who offered the $150,000 a month. The truth that it was Michael Jackson who brought Dr. Conrad Murray from Las Vegas to Los Angeles. And the truth that it was Michael Jackson who demanded the propofol, a drug that he called milk. All AEG Live was going to do is advance the money for the salary that Mr. Jackson was going to pay Dr. Murray if he went on tour to London like so many other people on the tour. And I told you that in opening statements. We've never run from that. That is true. But that doesn't change any of the facts that you learned in five months since. Mr. Jackson was going to pay Dr. Murray ultimately, as he was everything else on the tour. And AEG Live never even advanced that money, ever. It never paid Dr. Murray anything. And that is because he was never hired by AEG Live to go on tour. If they'd hired him, they'd have paid him. They didn't hire him. They never gave him any money. And you saw that evidence. All these truths, they need you to ignore them. They need you to shut your ears to them. Because that's the only way that those five questions they told you yesterday, that's the only way you get a yes in those. And you saw here in this trial that plaintiffs, in fact, are not searching for the truth. How many times did you see Mr. Panis show you part of a document, take an excerpt from an email? Do you remember that budget where they didn't show you the footnote? How many times did we have to get up and say, wait, 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 put that in context? You never heard us do that. Remember Ms. Fay, Ms. Rowe, Ms. Sankey? How many times did they sit there and go, let me explain that? That's not what I meant. Did you ever say, I want to, did you ever hear me go, I want a yes or no? No. We let them talk. You know, I'm sure you remember. And there's a reason for that. The truth isn't something AEG Live's afraid of. Why would we be? We wanted the whole truth from every witness, even theirs, even their version of the truth. And all those emails, trust me, there are a lot of emails there I'd love not to have been here. Okay? You saw all those emails? Tens of thousands of them. Whose emails were those? AEG Live's. They turned those over. They're not hiding anything here because AEG Live is not afraid of the truth. The truth here is a tragedy. Make absolutely no mistake about it. This is a tragedy. It is a tragedy for this family. It is a tragedy for this mother. It is a tragedy for these kids. It's horrible. And it's incredibly sad. But it is not a tragedy of AEG Live's making. You can't point the finger at them, and you shouldn't. Now, members of the jury, I ask you, please, don't close your ears to the facts. When you're answering the questions on that verdict form, think about who chose Dr. Murray, who hired him. Think about whether AEG Live knew what was going on in Mr. Jackson's locked bedroom at night. Think about whether you believe AEG Live caused Mr. Jackson's death. Think about that, because that is the real question here. Did AEG Live cause Mr. Jackson's death? Because that's what they're saying. Mr. Jackson chose this doctor years before. And Mr. Jackson chose the drug that killed him. Mr. Jackson, like every adult, is responsible for his own choices. You heard them. He's no different. And sometimes we make really bad choices. It's true. And it'd be awesome when we make those changes to turn and point to somebody else. It wasn't me. But you can't do that. That's what it means to be an adult. That's what personal responsibility is about. He made some bad choices. 
and it resulted in a horrible tragedy. But you can't and shouldn't blame someone else for Mr. Jackson's bad choices. He was a grown man. All righty. I'm going to give you a little road map. If you remember from trial, I often like to point out where we're going to go so you have some sense of what we're going to do. Um, I believe that plaintiffs have focused this case on a lot of distractions, okay, not the facts. A lot of things were thrown at you that I don't think are relevant to your determination. I think you saw that throughout the course of the trial. For example, they put on evidence that Mr. Jackson was ill at a rehearsal a couple days before he died, June 19th. Remember that, ill? And that people told AEG Live about it, because they weren't there. And you remember those trouble at the front emails? Chains that you were shown over and again, or portions of them? Um, you remember how the, they'd ask every witness, anybody who walked up, what do you think that means? Even people who weren't on them, knew nothing about them, um, showed again and again and again. Let me be clear about something. AEG Live did discuss Mr. Jackson's health in those emails, because they were asked to. That is what they were about. We're not disputing that. There's no dispute about that. But you're, not being asked, but you're not being asked to decide here what AEG Live knew about Mr. Jackson's health. Look at your verdict forms when they come. You're not asked to decide what, what, what they knew. What did they know about his health? What should they have known about Mr. Jackson's health? Whether they knew he was sick on June 19th. And you'll see why I say this. Look at the verdict form. You know what? I don't know if you still have. Can I, can I get the verdict forms? Is that right, Your Honor? Thank you, sir. This should be the same one. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit like what, what I did during trial, which is you remember they would go in a certain order, then generally I would go backwards through that, take the most recent and go back. So for in this instance, I'm going to go through the same order. And there's a reason for that. That's because, you remember, what, they have the burden of proof. You have to answer yes to every question before you're going to find liability and get to damages. You find no on any of these, which I believe you will, it's done. So that's why I want to go through it in that order. Because no, you have to say yes to all of these before you get to finding them money. And I believe along the way, you're going to say no. So we're going to take them in order. And these are the questions that you'll fill out. And every one of those questions, if you look at it, I was talking about the idea that, that this is not about Michael Jackson's health. If you look, it's because this is about Dr. Conrad Murray. Look at the questions. Every one of them has to do with Dr. Conrad Murray. 